Hi and welcome to my playhouse and today I thought we would continue the discussion about how to connect our servers with um, 10 gigabit and beyond well 10 gigabit and 25 gigabit I forgot to mention that in the last video when we are talking 10 gigabit and using these SFPs which just fell to the ground um, for 10 gigabits they're called SFP plus and for 25 gigabit they're called SFP 28 don't ask me why but uh, yeah that, that's, that's what they're called so that was uplifting <laughs> last week's video was rather popular there was a lot of good questions and even some good answers and stuff that I hadn't thought about so yeah been around and I've found all the different ways that I have to connect 10 gigabit so I thought we would just start with having a look at that so if we just start with the simplest um, a lot of 10 gigabit equipment does still use RJ45 connections and this is not a cat 6 cable this is probably what is it I can't find it doesn't matter oh it is actually a cat 6 it will work I don't know why I don't like using it very much for 10 gigabit I think I've just just tired of these cables in some way I've had uh, my share amount of issues with cables where this little tab falls off and over time the the connection just goes out enough to uh, to make a bad connection and that is really difficult to find but Overall, I have no idea why I don't like this, uh, except it doesn't feel as high quality as some of the other stuff, but nevertheless, it's very cheap. So yeah, it works for 10 gigabit. I, don't, I haven't seen it for 25 gigabits as of yet, so, but, but definitely 10 gigabit, it's, a, it's an option. Um, then there is the older where you have SFP pluses and you have a fiber optic cable. This system, which is okay. I see that I have a bad SFP for test purposes here. I put a big fat minus on it. Yeah, sometimes you need something that doesn't matter. <laughs> this is actually a very good way to, uh, to connect 10 gigabit if you have this widely available. Oh, and if you need some of these SFPs, ones that are good, I'm actually selling them in my little shop so uh, yeah do check that out in the description below um, but yeah you have um, an SFP in each end in this case there's two different SFPs and then you have a fiber optic cable in between with LC LC connectors other stuff is available I do believe that this is the most commonly used uh, in the market but as I talked about in the last video this is some some downsides, uh, the cable is very fragile, the uh, connections are very fragile because they can become dirty very very easy and you can clean them but you need a you need a microscope to see if you actually cleaned them or if you just move the dirt right to the sensible spot and you can clean this a thousand times and then one thousand and one time that's where you move the dirt right in where it's not supposed to be so uh, yeah um, some benefits and some downsides then we have a new one we didn't see this last time this is an AOC and I forget what that stands for but I'm sure someone in the comments will tell me this is an SFP with a fiber optic cable that is one piece you can't take this apart but they have made it like this so it has the benefit of it doesn't become dirty because you can't replace the cable it's uh, it's it's what it came with and the length is what it came with and this one is a very nice cisco one it's a 10 gigabit cisco thinky and this end is also cisco and it even has some fancy certificate something something I have no idea what I stole this out of it must have been something important hmm. these are actually pretty good and they're rather affordable compared to the 
to the previous solution where you buy the cable and you buy each SFP, well, you get a discount when they get to put everything together for you. I have no idea how that works. I'm sure this Cisco branded one is not among the cheaper ones, but well, I don't know. I haven't looked it up, but I would expect that they um, they will charge you a premium for the Cisco label. <laughs> then we have the duct cable, which is this. This is, um, you don't have fiber optic between the SFPs. You have an SFP, SFPP, <laughs> it says on here. SFP plus but it doesn't convert the signal well over here you see the end of a little PCB and it doesn't convert the signal to light it just sends it through an electric cable to the other end where it just sends it in that could go between your network card and your switch and everything would be fine it has a really big benefit on the cost because a cable like this is very affordable it's like almost one third of the price as as one of these where this one is about as much as the cable for the other one and then you still need to go and buy two SFPs well this is just one piece so yeah this is pretty cool and uh, you can bend it and you can drop it and it's it's very doable so there's there's that then in the in the comments uh, there were something that I haven't thought about and that is <laughs> Well, these things where you have an SFP but you put in a network cable, there, there's a tin base T connector there and you put in your CAT6 cable there and you actually get a 10 gigabit connection. This one is a 10 gigabit, I didn't have two of those so this one is just one gigabit so but for if I move it really fast you can't see it <laughs> but yeah. Um, I didn't think about this solution and it kind of takes the worst out of both worlds uh, These are very expensive one of these costs as much as uh, as this so um, You don't really get any benefit except if um, If you actually don't need a 10 base T in each end so it's very good for converting so you can have a this one going into an SFP uh, slot and this one to a 10 base 10 but uh, I have used that but yeah that's an also end solution I'm using my servers to hang stuff here it's very very crude <laughs> so there was um, there was a good discussion about latency on the different options where people says that well going through light uh, fiber optic cable is way faster than electric cable like like this and that is actually not the case so what is this rambling fool talking about because light travels 300,000 kilometers a second and nothing moves faster than light right there is an exception though light travels 300,000 kilometers a second in vacuum but it only does that in vacuum in the vacuum of space it travels that distance if you send it through a fiber optic cable which is glass it only travels with 200,000 kilometers an hour uh, sorry that's not hour that's second um, and that's glass fun fact <laughs> it travels 225 in water water so um but um, we are dealing with this one and 200,000 kilometers a second that means that it travels around the planet if um, if you have the planet here and it's not flat it is round but uh, at ground level and all the way around it from one end to another end there is 40,000 kilometers it's a nice long hike and that means that every second if if i if my flashlight would curve around the planet instead of just going straight it would go around the planet five times just in one second that's a blotchy long trip you can really get some mileage on there 200,000 kilometers per second is exactly the same as an electric signal travels through copper so copper and that well that's 
also cover. So, um, so the speed of the light in the fiber optic cable and the speed of the electric signal in the copper is the same. So why is light still faster? Well, um, if we take these five times around the world, you can't send a couple signal around the world five times. I w probably you can't even send a light signal around the world five times in current technology, but you would need a lot more repeaters when you're talking copper than if you're talking light. You can actually send light pretty far and copper not so far. So I think that's where we get uh, a latency is uh, we need to amplify our copper multiple times to just send it one time around the globe. We would also need to amplify our light multiple times to send it around the world. But that's just because our glass isn't clean enough and our copper wire isn't perfect enough. It's If you have a long wire here and you come with your your electron is a tiny little thing that you want to come out the other end it's not as if this electron travels through the wire and comes out the other end that's not how it works uh, you push this in this end and then the one uh, out here is pushed out so uh, yeah <laughs> actually there is also um, measurements of how long it takes for this electron to travel through a wire and be the one pushed out the other never mind it's um it's weird as heck but it's 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 rather funny it's like a bus you can push a man in the back and then another one is pushed out the front or opposite you push one more person in the front of the bus and then the one on the back has to step out okay um that brings us to latency because there is different latencies on these different systems so in the comments there was a bit of a discussion about latency on the different kind of uh, configurations uh, copper i wasn't able to find anything on that so if you know what the latency is on a on a copper connection and here i mean i mean this one without anything I would expect that that's probably the lowest latency uh, in the in the cable itself because there is nothing to hinder it. It's full speed, 200,000 kilometers a second through there, so uh, I would expect that is zero, zero latency. Might be other latencies in the different end, but in the cable itself, there is only the distance of cables, and I don't think we need to measure that. But I really don't know. So if, if anyone in the comments knows what the latency is in copper RJ45 connections, uh, please do let me know. Then I can become way smarter. And I always encourage this. Do read the comments because there's a lot of really smart people down there. And if you're the smartest one there, please do enlighten us other fools in the comments below. But do keep it nice and clean and friendly, which is usually not a problem. But yeah, I'll just say it. Um, then we have the 10 base T, which is this connection here. That's um, It's also the worst connection uh, latency wise. So uh, this connection has a latency of two... 2.6 we'll get back to what those 2.6s is then we have sfp fiber that could be this one it could also be uh, this one which is just the uh, the prefabricated one but it's it does the same thing it's um two sfps and a fiber optic cable between them so uh, yeah those two that has a latency of 0 0.1. You can see there is quite a difference there. Then we have the SFP plus uh, duct cable, which is this one. SFPs with um, copper cable between them. Weirdly enough, this is a lot better than the 10 base T up here. This is 0 0.3. There is quite a difference in the latency. So what is the latency? So this is in microseconds, so that, that's the weird... Uh... 
so that if and if we um, and if we change that instead of microseconds we put in the next one so we change this one to have two zeros and then we change these this one to be 100 and this one to be 300 then we can set nanoseconds in here and you can see the 2600 nanoseconds 100 nanoseconds and 300 nanoseconds and what the heck is a nanosecond right well you have a second one second one then you have a millisecond uh, that's an ms that's 0 0.001 then you have a microsecond that's 0 0.00001 one then you have a nanosecond that is 0 0.00000000001 that's uh, it's so small that it's outside of view and it's it's not a lot so we have 300 of those or we have 2600 of those where usually we are messing up here with the milliseconds your ping times is milliseconds you have a two millisecond delay or you have something like that so it's a very small delay so i just went to my computer and i pinged google and um, there was a uh, 13 millisecond ping time that means that uh, we are up here we have uh, 13 of those and on this scale down here that would be here so this latency is a very considerable smaller I can't calculate that in my head, but it's a hundred thousand, a million times faster, or somewhere between there. So this one with its uh, 2600 nanoseconds delay and way too expensive and worst of all worlds, uh, it's, it's not a good option. The duct cable, which has a lot of benefits and kind of a low latency is, is a good option in my regards the fiber optic cable with the sfps and an extremely low latency is is a very good option but has some other downsides i can't get into my head how it's faster to translate a digital signal to a light signal and then uh, transfer it back to a digital signal instead of just sending the signal through a wire and it coming out digitally again um yeah that is beyond me how that is slower i'm lost on that one then we have the joker here which might have a really low latency in the cable itself remember it's it's the latency from here to there from there to there there to there it's not whatever is in the other end and this might beat everything because there is nothing there so i hope you got confused on a whole new level what cables to pick when you're connecting your servers in the data center i'll still recommend the duct cables for the short uh, connections on the on the back of the server and to the switch or between servers aim in the back of the rack if you need to go longer distances well the sfps with the fiber optic cable can be the only solution because these duct cables there is a limit to how long they make those they make these um, prefabricated fiber optic cables they make them longer but if you go for the the diy fiber optic with sfps well you can kind of get them as long as you want uh, you can order cables multiple hundred meters if you if you can afford it it becomes quite expensive i did look into it so still very much recommended and this is an SF1, um, not sponsored, but they're still pretty good. So, um, but do let me know in the comments if you're using SF uh, duct cables or if you found some other fantastic brand that I need to know about. Maybe they have an affiliate thing that I can, well, make a fortune, promote it to you or promote it back to you. Well, fair enough right so uh, thank you very much for watching my videos do subscribe to my channel so you can see me again and have a really nice day bye bye